No, they didn't make me. I was smart enough to put it on because I wanted to attend. But uh, they did tell me you can't take your jacket off. They did say that. Uh, they said uh, it was interesting to put one of the bailiffs or one of the guards said uh, they didn't want me to wear the brand that was on the outside of my. It says organic pastures on it. And I said, well, if I take it off, and, and the other guy says, what he's got underneath is far worse. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it's far worse. And they said, just today, go ahead. And so uh, I guess the brand or getting pastures doesn't have anything about raw milk on it, so I was able to go in. Mark, does that mean I can't wear my I love raw milk pin at the defense table? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I would push the limits here. I really would, because the more they object to what we do, the more egregious the appearance of the fact that we aren't getting to tell the whole truth. And these are smart jurors, they get it. When they heard that, that some black dye had been poured into 2,200 gallons or 300 gallons of perfectly wonderful raw milk, um, and that the test came back that the milk was fine, you could just see them going, wow, what a waste of food. Um, I think that uh, I think the government hurt themselves today, I really do. That's my personal opinion. I'm not an attorney, I don't write about this stuff, but that's just my gut. I, I think they really hurt themselves. When Lynn, or Liz introduced us, she said that she'd like us to talk about the, the rights and responsibilities of food. I teach an eight hour class on the Constitution, and I specifically talk about rights and responsibilities, which are opposite sides of the same coin. It is true that on occasion the government will take our rights away. More often, we give our responsibilities to the government. Do a man and woman have a right to have children? I think it's pretty obvious that they do. I'm sure that somebody will disagree with that somewhere. But if a man and woman do have a right to have children, they also have a responsibility to feed the children, to shelter the children, and to teach those children all the skills and values that they want those children to have, to be functional adults. In 1953, the government came up with the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and which subsequently split off into a number of different uh, departments. But the federal government has basically been controlling education since 1953. And parents who insist, they absolutely insist that they love their children more than life itself, they send their children to government-controlled schools. They let the government and the teachers, you know, establish the reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, I've spoken at high schools where the high school seniors are using Crayolas to stay inside the lines with coloring books while I'm trying to talk to them about, you know, basic civics. Um, you know, a lot of our students are, are functionally illiterate. And the parents will be indignant, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm all upset because my children, you know, haven't learned the skills and values I wanted them to learn. Why not? The answer is because you gave that responsibility to the government. And now you're upset. And now you have the audacity to be upset because the government didn't do your job as well as you wanted them to do it? Who's responsible? for putting food down your throat. Well, that would be you. Who's responsible for building a shelter to keep the rain off your head? That would be you. Who's responsible for saving up money while you're in your younger, you know, working years so that you can live, you know, the golden years and retire comfortably? Who's responsible for that? Well, you are. But our parents and grandparents were conned by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, said, you just give us your Social Security money, we're going to invest that money for you, we're the government, we're bigger than you are, we're smarter than you are, and when you are ready to retire, you are going to have more money than you know what to do with it. And so now, I mean, people can barely survive. People who are living on Social Security have to decide whether they're going to buy food, or medication this month because they can't afford both. Is it a really smart idea to let the government be responsible for your survival? When I'm not teaching classes on the Constitution, I'm often at the airport teaching skydiving. I'm a skydiving instructor. 
I love to jump out of perfectly good airplanes with terrified students in my hands, and I do that to relax. I will give you one guess. Who do you think packs my parachute? You. Absolutely. <laughs> I will share my lunch with you. I'll loan you my car keys, but stay away from my parachute. I'm not even kidding. I'm not pretending. That is my parachute. That is my responsibility because that is my body falling through the sky at 120 miles an hour. And when I pull the ripcord, the last thing I want to do with the last 10 seconds of my life is use your name in vain. Because I was dumb enough to let you take the responsibility for packing my parachute. The problem with Americans today is that they refuse to accept responsibility. We have a woman that goes to McDonald's, she orders a hot cup of coffee, and I can't believe McDonald's could be so stupid as to hand her a cup of hot coffee. And when she puts the cup of coffee in her lap and scalds her happy place, then she's going to file a lawsuit against McDonald's because she was, look, as soon as the cup of coffee goes through the window, it's now your coffee. It is now your responsibility. And if you want to put it in your lap, you've got the right to do that, but you've got to suffer the responsibility of the consequences. We, as Americans, need to stand up. We need to start assuming those responsibilities and not allowing the government to decide how our kids' children are taught, how we're, our milk is, is delivered to our home, what foods we're allowed to eat. We need to stand up and take responsibility for our own.